the last thing we're going to do a little bit of pronunciation practice this was a comment from a video from years ago this individual mentioned they had issues with the tl pronunciation and to talk about this point before we get into the tl pronunciation i want to talk about the r sound let's compare it to the pronunciation practice of the japanese r so japanese r ra ri ru de ro um, to me, it sounds like a soft D. So I might have butchered that a little bit there. Japanese purists, native speakers, you can feel free to correct me. Da di do de do. Da di do de do. It's not a hard R. It's not ra, ri, ru, re, ro. And it's not an L sound. It's not la, li, lu, le, lo. I know that some Japanese instructors, they'll try to teach the sound like, oh, well, the Japanese R, it's like a blend of R and L. And if that makes sense to you, if you hear it that way, that's great. But to me, it sounds like a soft D. And as I say it, even if it doesn't sound like a soft D, me imagining it sounds like a soft D is what allows me to try to make the sounds da di do de do, da di do de do. So why is that important? Because when I go into this explanation of these TL sounds, I have them grouped because these different groupings affect how the TL sound is when it's blended together. Maybe my explanation will make sense. Maybe it doesn't click with you. Maybe you need to tell yourself something differently in order for you to match the sound. Whatever you have to tell yourself for pronunciation, is the most important thing. So we don't have to be on the same page. We don't have to align. But my way of explaining it is how I think you can activate that sound. The most important thing is be selfish. Like whatever advice you have or get, you need to cater it towards you because it's your life. It's your way of speaking and pronouncing things. Let's start with this uh, first category uh, up here because this is the most segmented where the TL doesn't blend together. And the T sound is actually pretty strong. We have exactly, gently. So I'm over exaggerating it. So let me say it a few more times to be a little bit more natural. Exactly, gently. To me, there's more emphasis on the T in both of those cases. Both of those cases. Again, exactly, gently, exactly, gently. Exactly, gently. The next two words here, I feel like there's more emphasis on the S sound. So we have castle, whistle, castle, whistle. You don't need to be doing the T sound at all. Some other people might tell you like the T is like just barely present there, but I feel like it's just castle, whistle, castle, whistle, castle, whistle. The last category where I feel like it's, um, Maybe the most common is when you have the two T's together with the L. Uh, I guess the very last word here, there's no double T, but it's still the same pronunciation sound. And in this case, the main thing that I think helps, and it's very similar to the Japanese R, is you don't want to make the T too harsh. To me, these double T's, they almost sound like a soft D. So we have bottle, little, settle. Mm, I heard it right there. Maybe a little bit of a T. Subtle. So subtle, subtle. Maybe we can put that in our own category. But the double T's of bottle, little. I'm not saying bottle, little. It's not overly segmented in that way. You need to make it really soft. Bottle, little. So for you, if it still sounds like a T, okay. Other people, maybe it sounds like a D sound. Bottle, little. Okay, bottle, little. Then we have settle, settle, and subtle, subtle. Practicing these words in isolation does not help you at all. So we have the screen exactly, gently, castle, whistle, bottle, little, settle, subtle. Don't practice that way because that's not going to help you. It's going to make you feel like you're improving or it's quick and easy, right? But you really need to think about what situations you're going to use these phrases or these words. So exactly. That's exactly right. That's exactly what he did. Can you think of a situation where you would say that? 
great. If you can't even think of a situation you would say these words, then that's a low priority for you. You don't have to stress out over it gently. Maybe, I don't know, you're, you're instructing someone how to cook. Gently knead the dough. Gently do something to the food. I, I don't know. Like that, that's a clear sign that gently is not really going to be part of my vocabulary set. I can't think of a situation where I need to do it. Castle, if you're going to go sightseeing, oh, uh, are there any castles nearby? You know, what's, what's the biggest castle in town? Whistle? Uh, I've never been able to whistle, you know, uh, all my friends are really good at whistling. The uh, conversation I had earlier today is some people don't realize that in fall in autumn, you can still get allergies. And when my nose gets stuffed up, sometimes I have a nose whistle that happens. Okay. If you're not really talking about nose whistles, if you don't care about your ability to whistle, maybe you're not going to use that word. Maybe if there's a car problem that you have, there's like some sort of weird whistling sound. Then the words not even whistle, but whistling. It's like very, very specific and unique. Bottle. Mm, we use bottles. I think a lot of us use bottles almost every day, but talking about bottle, talking about a bottle, using the word bottles, unless you're a parent that, oh, you need to clean the bottles for your baby or you need to buy some bottles, everyone else you could easily substitute that word for, we need more water, right? Hey, can you pick up some bottles of water? No one's going to be saying that. Hey, can you pick up some more water? We're out. Little, uh, oh, he used to be so little or does that hurt uh, a little bit? When is he going to get here in a little bit? Okay. Maybe those are some expressions you could use settle. Uh, never settle. Maybe that's the catchphrase right there. Oh, always treat yourself, prioritize yourself, never settle for less. And then subtle, subtle is like something that's minuscule, right? Like not really obvious. Uh, did you see it? Did you notice it? Oh, it was, it was a little subtle, but I think I got it. Like, see, that's not really lending itself to conversation. So everybody's situation and affinity for these words is going to be different. Maybe you are in a role where you need to use certain words more often. Maybe at your job, you'll have to use certain words more often. Like they're going to be more pertinent to you. Then if it is a word that you have to use, then you just have to put more practice towards it. That's all it means.